morning, Quack Chapter 101 here, and today's shout out goes to the RC Master. The RC Master was first to say first in one of my recent videos, and thus wins the shout out. So congratulations. Good morning, Quack Chapter 101 here with a review of another neat drone. This is now the Tomzon D40. What is a D40? Well, as you can see, it is another one of these folding drones, micro folding drones, um, tiny little thing. And what's special about it, folks, is it weighs only 244 grams. The idea of being at 244 grams, this does not require registration in most countries. However, it does have a camera on it. So for those countries that do require registration because of cameras, you know, that still can be an issue in some countries. Now, it does come with a very nice carrying case, making it highly portable. Nicely portable for the drone and its accessories. You can put it inside the carrying case with it. Now, um, it does have brushless motors in this size. This tiny little drone has brushless motors. So um, that's for improved power and durability of the motors and longevity of the use of the motors. And additionally, it has GPS GLONASS system installed within it for a high accuracy GPS system. Um, it also gives it the capability of automatic return to home and landing on command, on loss of signal, or on low voltage from the battery. Finally, additionally, it does have an optical flow sensor in the belly, so you can fly this indoors or outdoors using the optical flow sensor to maintain automatically maintain the drone's position without GPS. However, you lose uh, capability of return to home when you're flying in optical flow. But you could would use uh, the optical flow system without GPS if you encounter problems with the GPS while you're flying outdoors. You enter in, if you're entering into toilet bowl effect and you want to prevent a crash, turn off the GPS and the optical flow system should take over and you should be able to bring it back manually. Um, it does have a rather large battery, 7.4 volt, uh, 2200 milliampere hour battery. That's the battery for this little drone uh, that provides it up to uh, 27 minutes of flight time. Now, I just flew this today, and I haven't uh, calculated the time, but it was pretty darn long. So that might actually be right. We'll find out uh, when I actually calculate the time and include it in the final video editing. Now, it, I mentioned it does have a camera. However, unfortunately, if you look on this drone or around this drone, there is no SD card slot. And what does that mean, folks? That means it has no onboard recording capability. Instead, video is sent to your phone via Wi-Fi and recorded to your phone on, on board your phone. Um, again, no onboard recording capability with this. Uh, the disadvantages of that is that comes with an inherent Wi-Fi issue such as uh, potential frame dropping and skipping. However, this does have a very powerful Wi-Fi transmitter. And I verified that today when I flew. And I was getting ranges out to about 180 meters without any interference on the Wi-Fi. So it, it is a good Wi-Fi system. Um, it's good for uh, close-in flying. But, you know, again, um, this is advertised with ranges. I uh, forgot what the range was, but it, <laughs> some astronomical range. Keep in mind that you're not able to get FPV video after you reach about 200 meters, 300 meters in that area there. Um, you're going to start getting broken FPV video and loss of signal to your phone of the FPV feed, and you'll be flying blind. So, you know, these uh, advertisements of extended range out to kilometers are kind of useless if you don't have an SD card installed, is what I'm trying to say, folks. Okay, okay, enough said on the SD card. Now, it does have up down lens control, okay. You can tilt this lens up or down uh, remotely using the controller's uh, sensor button. I gotta apologize that door, there's some guys cutting concrete out there, but uh, let's continue up. Uh, you can remotely power this camera up or down using the remote control. However, there is no stabilization system. This is not a stabilized gimbal on this. So what does that mean? It means shaky video, folks. Expect some shaky video. Now, the app has the capability of some minor electronic image stabilization. I've tested it flying around uh, my neighborhood here, and it doesn't really cushion out the bouncing of the drone as much as cushioning out... Um, I see I see a lot of jello with this particular drone. You'll see that too in the video. So it cushions some of that out. It, it stabilizes some of that. And but with that you get somewhat blurry video. Now this could have benefited from an onboard processor, but it does not have 
onboard electronic image stabilization. So I want to make that clear. The image stabilization is advertised. The EIS that's advertised is through your phone using the drone's Tomzon G app. Okay, that's been said. Now, um, the video, let's talk about the video. You know, again, these are one of those ones that are advertised 4K. Well, that's 4K interpolated, folks. The actual sensor on this is 1080p. It records video, 1080p video to your phone at 25 frames per second. It is capable of taking a, uh, still photos, but and those are interpolated. Those are interpolated photos. They're enlarged, electronically enlarged, up to 4,096 by 3,072 pixels. Um, there's no real advantage in interpolation, but that's how they advertise 4K inter 4K um, for this particular drone. Again, not 4K video. It's 1080p video at 25 frames per second. Now I mentioned the Tom's on G app. You know that this video, uh, the FPV video is very strong and it does transmit very well at up to you know I was at around 200 meters, so it worked very well at that at that type of range. But to do that, this uses 802.11 AC Wi-Fi, five gigahertz Wi-Fi, 802.11 AC. Now not everybody has 802.11 AC Wi-Fi on their phone, so before purchasing this. I strongly recommend that you first verify that your phone indeed has 802.11 AC Wi-Fi. And a way to do that is simply Google your phone's name along with the terms 802.11 and specifications and see if 802.11 AC shows up in the search results. Um, if you don't have 802.11 AC Wi-Fi, do not recommend you get this or you'll be very disappointed as your phone will not work with this drum. So, let you know. Now, with that app, we get the ability... With the uh, Tom's on G app, you get the ability to view the FPV video along with uh, advanced flight control me features of circle me, follow me, and waypoints. And we'll demonstrate those when we go flying today. Let's go over what you get in the box. You get that controller, or the uh, carrying case that I mentioned. You get a very good instruction manual. It's actually well written in English, covering uh, the drone and how to get it into the air. I'll go over how to get into the air when we go out in the field, so watch that too. Uh, you get the drone and its battery. You get a spare set of propellers for the drone in case you ding up some of these propellers, along with a charging cable, the charging cable for the, the drone's battery. Let me show you that real quick. This battery is charged through a micro USB port right there on the back side of the battery. Um, I recommend that you use a wall charger, a two amp wall charger to charges battery as uh, char trying to charge this through your computer port will be very long it could take days because computer ports are only about 500 milliamps I believe <laughs> you want a 2 amp wall charger to charge that battery okay enough said of that and again you get the cable to charge the battery and you get a screwdriver in, in here a micro screwdriver to uh, change the propellers if needed as they use these little micro screws so let's go over the controller real quick. This is the controller. Finally, we'll go over the controller. The antennas on this, one of them is actually a real antenna, I believe. Uh, I think. I thought I saw a, uh, a uh, wire going up in it, but I, I, you can't, I can't confirm that right now. I can't see the wire anymore. <laughs> but I thought I saw it earlier. But to turn this on, you bring both of these control handles down, and these are for ins uh, installing your phone. Um, it held my big white phone, so that's good, although it did bump the, the volume button on the phone. Um, let's go over the buttons on this. This is your throttle, this is your yaw, this is your pitch, this is your roll. Um, this button here is for changing the rates, or in other words, the speed of the drone. This button here is for activating the compass calibration of the drone. You can do a manual compass calibration using the controller. You press that button there, and that starts it. You can turn the GPS off by pressing this button. And why would you want to turn the GPS off? Well, either you want to fly indoors, you can turn the GPS off, or outdoors if you encounter problems with the GPS system while flying outdoors, you can turn it off and take over manual control of the drone using the optical flow sensor. It will automatically enter into optical flow flight. Automatic takeoff and automatic landing are activated by this button here. You have to first start the motors by bringing both sticks down and outward like this and then press the automatic takeoff to do that. use that button. Um, this button here is for taking a photo with a quick press or if you hold it down for two seconds that starts video and you stop video before turning off the uh, drone 
Make sure you do that or you lose your video. This button here is for automatic return to home and landing. Press that and that activates automatic return to home. And these two buttons here are for this one is for uh, lowering the gimbal, and this one is for raising the, the uh, lens. <laughs> I'm sorry, the camera lens. Lower the camera lens and raise the camera lens. It can be tilted downward 135 degrees and up, up level. So that is the controller. That is the Tomson D40. Let's take this drone out into the field and see how it flies. So hope you enjoy this flight. Good morning, Quadcopter 101 here with a flight of the Tomzon D40 here at Pleasant Ridge Park on a beautiful day. We do have a bit of a breeze today, about 5 to 7 miles per hour, but uh, this should be able to handle it. Um, let's go over the startup procedures. First off, we need to turn on the drone by pressing and holding the on-off switch in the back here, and then place it on a flat level surface like so. Next thing we're going to do is turn on the transmitter like so by bringing both sticks down or not like that, these things here. Okay. And uh, we're going to activate the uh, compass calibration by pressing this button here. Holding it down to heal your beep. Then pick up the drone and check its lights are flashing. See they're, flash they're green flashing rapidly. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. So we go rotate it until we hear a beep. And then we go downward. We heard that beep, so we rotate nose downward. This is important for all GPS drones, folks, to, to do your compass calibration before a flight. I strongly recommend you do it. Some people avoid it, but I wouldn't, <laughs> okay? And now I'm going to connect my phone. The, the drone's emitting a Wi-Fi signal on five gigahertz. I'm gonna connect my phone to that Wi-Fi signal and then open the app. So hold on, folks, while I do that. Okay, this is the Tomzon G app, available on Google Play and iTunes. Make sure you select D40, since this is the D40 drone. And then we hit Submit. And wait a few seconds here. And it says Preparation. We're going to skip some of those preparations, because we did them already. So I'm just going to hit Next. Start. You can use the, the app to do that, but I'm going to do you know skip it. Then we're going to hit Submit. Okay, we are ready to fly right now. And first thing I'm going to do, make sure we're in GPS mode. We have GPS and 16 signal or 16 satellites. So we are receiving. So uh, first thing I want to do is start the video recording by pressing this button here. And then we're going to start the motors by down and out. Then we're going to press automatic takeoff. And check the stability of the airplane. Of the drone. And get in front of the camera. And say, how do you like my shirt today, folks? <laughs> okay. I do have a tie-dye on under, under my sweater. Let's sync up the cameras here. Okay, it looks very stable. So we should be good to go. So I am going to send it up on. Up and up on. Upward and up on. Okay, keeping in mind, this is recording to Wi-Fi, so you are going to see some issues. And also, I'm seeing a lot of, uh, right now I can tell you, I'm seeing a lot of uh, jello. <laughs> There's jello on the drone, drone's camera. It's vibrating a bit. Now, there is an option in the uh, app that you can use to um, stabilize the video using the app on your phone, using your phone's processor. I'm going to stop it right there, folks. However... I've tried that already. When you do such, I'm going to rotate too. When you do such, you lose a lot of image quality. It becomes very uh, blurry. Okay. I'm still getting really good Wi Fi or FPV from this drone, even at this range. I'm su surprised. How far are we here? I'm trying to look for the uh, data. 120 meters away, about. So we'll go a little further out. We'll go to the edge of the road which is about 150 meters, I believe, or 100, 130, 140. And we're going to hit the return to home and landing button to test it out. Okay. So right there, about 150 meters, I expected. <laughs> I'm seeing a little bit of chop in the Wi-Fi FPV video. That's to be expected. Let me do a full rotate while we're over there, showing the, showing the camera from that position. Rotating some more. Trying to slowly rotate. So you can see the area. Okay, it's pointed back toward me. While well, it's pointed back toward me, let's hit that return to home button. Return to home is activated. 
and I'm going to step away from the landing pad so we're going to see how close the return to home is. Now I'm not going to let it go all the way to the ground folks. I'm going to stop it uh, because I want to continue doing other things. But we'll see how close its return to home and landing is. It's coming overhead. And we're in altitude of about uh, 30 meters. It does return to home at 30. And let's see if it's end from up there. Should be coming down. Okay, it's overhead. Now it turns back in the direction it was pointed and then uh, starts descending. We'll see how close it is. I'm gonna, again, I'm gonna hit the return to home button just before it lands. And we are off, I'd say, by a good three meters. <laughs> so let's come down lower and show you that. Okay, we're off by about three meters. <laughs> it's close enough for government work as my dad would once, <laughs> once said. Um, let me get in front of the picture. We're going to stop the video recording by pressing this button here because I want to take some photos down. So let's take a photo. I think I took a photo. Yeah, take another one. Okay, and one more. Okay, now let's try follow me. For follow me, I'm going to walk over here. And uh, let's see here, follow position is that second one down on the right, right below return to home on the app. I'm gonna press that button and we're gonna follow on the bottom one, which is follow the phone, GPS follow. Okay, GPS start follow failed, why is that? Let's try. Oh, you gotta be three meters or higher. Okay, we'll do that. Then we're gonna lower the gimbal pressing the button to lower the gimbal. Let's try that again. Submit. Right, give it a little more. Let's try that follow position. Follow me as I walk away from it. And while we're doing that, why don't I start the video recording again? Video recording is started. And we'll try the walk. The follow me. What type of follow me do we got here? It appears to be DJI style, like you're pouring it on a string. Follow, 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 follow. So follow me works on this. Let's see if I walk toward it. Is it going to recognize me walking toward it and back away? Eventually? Eventually, there you go. Now it's fall, or recognize that I'm walking toward it. Let's lower it a little more. So, it sees me walking toward it. So yeah, that works too. So with that in mind, let's come out of follow me. Pressing the button there. Follow me is stop. Let's reduce the altitude and raise up that camera. And point it back toward me again. Actually, let's, let's go over to the other side of me here. Because the next thing I want to try is actually go right over top of me. Let me get under it. <laughs> We're going to do a circle position, which is the third one done. So getting under it. Um, that button is being pressed on my phone. Okay, circle position, third one done. And activate. Let's see what it does. Submit. So it's okay. This is where it was. I'm standing here. It's going over there. Let me lower the gimbal so it can see me from where it's going. And there I am. Can I lower the altitude? Raise up the gimbal. Yeah, one thing about this phone holder, it keeps bumping into my uh, volume control on my phone. So excuse me for that, folks. At least it's not bumping in. Okay, is it going to start turning? Turn off shortcut. 
Okay, this is going to start, and it's rotating, but boy, is it slow. Can I, can I increase the speed of that rotation? Yeah, you can. Pull on the stick. Put, or move the stick to the right, and there you go. Let's raise up the gibble. There's its circle position. So that works too. So you've got to activate it by moving this, the uh, pitch roll stick to the right or left to get it started. So circle position works. Let's stop it there. And finally, let's try the waypoints. For the waypoints, let's go up higher. And uh, in the lower, okay, in the lower uh, right corner, the fourth one down with the dots and lines, that's our waypoint uh, model. And right now, I'm not seeing anything showing the maps so uh, I guess you know I tried to download the maps before coming here or before I actually flew but it didn't seem to work but let's see if I can throw a few waypoints out nearby me let's zoom in a bit here there's my position there's the drones position so we'll go here and I'm trying to tap there one we'll do a couple waypoints two three and one coming back to me Four. Okay, and then I hit submit. And first off, it climbs, it seems to climb to a predetermined altitude. And there it goes to its first waypoint. Over there. That's going to turn. Waypoints are working, except the maps are not working. And I, you know, I'm not sure why. Sorry about that, folks, but the maps aren't. So we'll keep an eye on it up there as it heads to waypoint number two. Heading off to two. Okay, let's stop waypoints there. I'm gonna, I feel brave. I'm gonna increase the distances. Let's try it over here. I'm trying to select another waypoint. Now it won't do it. Okay, let's let's stop waypoints entirely. I'm coming out of it. Oh, there we go. I gotta hit it again. Let's try tap to fly. Tap to fly. No fixed mode, no trajectory flight. Okay. Let's try position there, position there, and position there, and submit. So, one to waypoint. Waypoint one, it's taking its time. And it's gonna turn. And it should turn here shortly. Okay, okay it's a way, waypoint one. Now heading to waypoint two. And then it'll turn from waypoint two and see how fast it goes to waypoint three. So, you know, this is working in effect. Um, the Wi Fi FPV video seems to be very strong. I guess it's recording to my phone. The issues I, that I'm seeing with it right now again, we have no stabilization. Um, you don't have a three axis or a two axis gimbal, you don't have any stabilization. And the electronic stabilization and uses your app. Okay, we're at the third waypoint. I'm going to stop that now. Uses your app. And because of that, um, you know, not everybody's phone is up to the task of doing real-time electronic image stabilization. Okay, I'm just flying around now. Hold on. Come on. Going back to FPV mode. I'm going to bring it down closer. So, you know, let me give you some initial thoughts here while it's coming down. And after this, we're going to try something else. And yeah, reducing throttle. Let me get back in the picture. So, you know, the, the it is a good drone in terms of flyability. Okay. In terms of flyability, a good drone. Um, it just does not have that 
stabilized uh, capability, nor does it record to an SD card. So we're still going to see some issues with um, Wi-Fi chopping it out. Although the Wi-Fi FPV video seems to be very strong with this drone. Let me sync that up. Very strong indeed with this drone. I was able to get to about 150 meters. No chop until I got to about the edge of that road, which is 150 meters away. Um, the other issue I'm seeing with the camera, it's not the best camera. <laughs> I'm seeing a lot of jello, vibration jello. That's caused by vibration of the prop propellers, folks, if you didn't know that. Um, so that, that's an issue with it. And again, the electronic image stabilization uses the app. Um, it would have been nice to have an onboard electronic image stabilization processor. Would do a better job, very much better job, than depending on people's phones. Well, uh, the flight time seems to be good on this. I'm, I still got a lot of uh, flight time. Um, let's try some of the buttons. Well, actually, I wanted to do something here. Um, is this is where's the headless mode on this? I forgot now. Good golly. Uh, maybe in the app. Yeah, I just fly it normally then. I'll simulate headless mode. Pressing the uh, down on the gimbal, lowering the gimbal. And let me show you that as I'm doing that. <laughs> okay, gimbal's been lowered. And I'm gonna pull back on the stick while increasing the throttle. Doing a manual up and away. <laughs> and then coming back down again. I like to do up and aways. And we'll, we'll put it down all the way next time and let's see if we can do a rocket shot. Can it go down all the way? I think it only goes down to 135 degrees, to tell you the truth. Let's try it. See how far down we can set this camera. Wrong way, of course. That's it there. Let me get in the picture. And throttle up. There you go, a rocket shot. <laughs> And how high are we? Let me raise it back up. Wow, that went up to 40 meters fast. I don't want to go that high. Coming back down. I'm trying to raise the gimbal back up, but it ain't doing it. It's not having anything to do with raising gimbals up at that altitude. I don't know why. But I'm reducing the throttle to bring it back down. Okay, I went full up, or well, maybe there we go. I was pressing the wrong button. Too high, too high. Yeah, a stabilized gibble would have made this, you know, a 250 gram range, or whatever the weight of this was, <laughs> I forgot. Would have made this an awesome drone along with SD card recording capability. Um, we still got lots of time on this thing. Still recording. Uh, let's try and see how sporty it is. Okay, we're going to go to higher rates. Third rate. Let's see how sporty it is. Let me get into a little altitude too before I do this. And zipping it around. Well, it is. It is pretty fast. Before I hit myself here. Going up a bit higher too. I hear doggy barking. I hope that's not barking at me. I don't want to upset the locals here because I don't want to lose this flying field. <laughs> but there it is. It's zippy. It can move. That thing move. It's a very fast drone. Okay, that's aggressive flying. Let's go back to normal flying. Let's conserve the battery a little bit there. Because <laughs> so, we want to see how what type of flight time we get out of the D40. So coming down. 
Um, it appears every 10 minutes the video <coughs> cuts out and restarts again. So you get 10 minute clips out of this video. Um, the FPV is still looking great. With that in mind, let's see if I can fly over to those trees using FPV only. I'm going to fly over to those trees. Not all the way, just toward them. Flying FPV. There is some lag, about a half second or so, so you want to fly slowly when you're doing this. Still ahead and out, but I am flying FPV. Okay, from there, let's see if I can turn and fly over the uh, first base, or not first base, uh, home plate. Going up a bit higher, too. Because I don't want to hit the backstop there. Getting above the altitude of the backstop and then heading toward home plate. Flying FPV alone, folks. So it is possible. You want to be in low rate again. If you're doing this, because of the lag, there is a slight amount of lag. And general bump turns. Let's go over to the pitcher's mound. Flying FPV alone. So yeah, FPV does work on this with your phone. See if I can fly to the edge of the, the road there. Again, we're testing the distance. We're 125 meters, still got good FPV. Still got real good FPV. Okay, it's starting to get a little okay, it's starting to get a little bouncy there. Turn it to the left, the lag is and there we go. At that altitude of six meters, we got out to 182 meters. That's not bad. I guess it is farther than the way than 150. I thought it was. Uh, let me go a little farther. Oh, there we go. We lost it again. Let me go a bit higher, see if I can regain it. There we go. Got it back. And we're getting low battery, so we're going to do uh, return to home from there. So pressing the return to home button. And it should bring it back home from out there at 182 meters. Coming back. So we know the range is close to 200 meters with us, about 180 at 6 meters altitude. If we would have gone up higher, we'd probably gone farther. So, you know, they advertise great control ranges on these drones, you know, um, like in the, in the order of kilometers. But keep in mind, folks, um, you're flying the FPV video ranges of these 5 gigahertz flyers is only about up to about uh, 300 meters maximum at altitude um, unless you have a repeater built into your transmitter and this one does not have a repeater built into it there are some that do have uh, repeaters that amplify the signal so you can fly out to those kilometer ranges but again this one does, does not we're going to stop right there and again we're still off by about two to three meters we still have battery power so, we're going to continue flying. So maybe this does get, what is it, 25 minutes they predicted? Maybe it does. So let's do some more follow me then. Going back up to three. Three meter altitude. Selecting uh, follow, which was the second one down. Now those other ones, optical follow me only works when you're in optical flow mode, folks. It doesn't work when submit and follow me is activated. Lowering the gimbal. One more. And we'll walk around the area and see what it does when it reaches low battery part. Does it return home? So we're just going to do follow me with the D40. Seems to actually do a good job. So if um, you're going all, on a walk, a nature walk, and you want to show off the area, you can do such with this drone and just have it follow you. Went up a little bit with a gimbal. And we have a little bit of blip there on the FPV. The follow position is working. Yeah, we're getting low on battery. It's starting to turn yellow. See, I'm not controlling it. It's doing it all its own, on its own, folks. Whoa, 
Let's follow me. Now all these um, items on the left side here, the on the on the uh, FPV screen, those are for controlling it using the app alone. You can do such, but I would not recommend it, folks. You have much better control using a um, the controller when it comes with this. But it does have that capability. And those wondering about the squiggly lines in the upper right, let's press that real quick. Those are settings, flight parameter settings, and I'm just going to hit save. That gives you the maximum distance that you can fly with this. Oh, low battery now. That gives you the maximum distance that you can fly with the drone. You can adjust that. Um, it does have geofence capability, in other words. Okay, for the remainder, with that in mind, low battery. The remainder of the flight, we're going to fly low battery, see if it has a geofence. Apparently it does. What's the geofence range? 20 meters about from takeoff. So let's demonstrate that again. We'll fly to the other end of the field. Until we bump into the geofence wall. And turn it toward me. Let's, let's bump into the other geofence wall in the other direction, 23 meters until it stops, and then it hits the wall. So again, you can't fly it any further than 20 meters now since we're on low battery. So we're going to stay close to the pad for the remainder of the flight. So final thoughts. Um, let's get final thoughts while we're here. Sinking it up. I'm seeing a lot of lag right now. <laughs> a lot of lag. Final thoughts, everything works on this, it does. Uh, it's just, uh, you know, the camera's not the best on this particular drone. Um, but again, this is under 250 grams, so in most countries, this does not require registration, um, other than those countries that do because of the camera. And um, all in all, you know, it's a good platform, a good drone platform, good controller, I wish, you know, they had a little more space under here so it doesn't bump into my uh, volume control on my phone. But eh, it's holding my phone. I'm happy with that. <laughs> a, lot of, a lot of these controllers aren't big enough to hold my phone. This one is. And, uh, yeah, everything seems to work except um, the camera. It's not the best. So, <laughs> uh, that's about it, folks. So, we're waiting until this battery goes down to uh, where it returns to home and lands. And there it goes right now. That's the, that's the final return to home and land. Let's see what it does. How high does it climb first? It is going to climb first to avoid obstacles on its way home. Climbing to meet altitude, I'm going to guess about 20 meters will stop. Yep, 20 meters. Most of them stop at 20. There are a few that go to 30. This one is 20. And then it'll go to the landing pad and land itself. This time I'll let it touch the ground unless it... Uh, it's in the way of something. <laughs> Let me get my airplane out of there. I was just flying an airplane here. It'll be landing here shortly. Just in case it wants to land on my airplane. Let me get out of the way. <laughs> Let me get uh, that out of the way too. My bag. <laughs> yep, yeah, good, good thing I got that out of the way. <laughs> there. Final landing on low battery. Cutting the grass now. So that's the Tomzon D40 from Tomzon Amazon. Um, nice aerial platform. Let's get my picture. So I hope you enjoyed this flight. It's Quadcopter 101 signing out. Hi, Quadcopter 101 here again. Hey, if you want to get your own shout out in one of my future videos, make sure you subscribe to my channel. It's real simple. Just go to my channel page and click on that subscribe. And also make sure to click that bell button right next to the subscribe button. That way you get notified when I release a brand new video immediately and give you a chance to get that first shout out. So give it a try, folks.